It's an age-old question that many Rocket League players often wonder, how do I actually improve my game sense? I mean, there aren't any training packs or free play drills to work on. Do I need to spend like one hour doing brain training or something? Not quite. Hey, I'm Jack, your friendly neighborhood Rocket League player who enjoys smacking a virtual ball around while rugged up on my comfy office chair. In today's video, I'm going to share five tips on how you can improve your game sense in Rocket League. Let's get into it. Before we get into the tips, what actually is game sense? To me, Game Sense is the ability to analyze the current state of play in the game to create a checklist for making a decision. Or, to put it more simply, seeing what is currently happening in a game of Rocket League and what you should be doing next. And you know what? Every single Rocket League player can always improve on their game sense. While not always the sole problem, having a lack of game sense can affect a player's ability to climb up the ranks or even solidify their spot in a recently earned rank. For example, finally winning that promotion into Grand Champion, but finishing the season off with 7 out of 10 GC wins. Yep. I've been there before. Okie dokie, let's get into these tips. Tip number one is to talk it out. Now what I mean by this is to speak out what exactly is happening during a game. Personally, during my games, I like to speak out who has the ball in that current moment and what they're actually trying to do with it. This then allows me to work out what I should be doing to cut off that play or what I should be doing to guard my net. Let's flip that situation to when I'm in possession of the ball. When in this situation, I like to speak out how my opponents are set up, where my teammates are on the field, and what exactly I'm trying to execute. You're probably wondering what exactly is the point of doing this? Well, it's to keep your mind present on the current moment so you know how exactly to act and react in situations throughout the game. A personal example that showcases the importance of this tip is when I get distracted in 1v1s. Sometimes I'll look up at the scoreboard seeing I've got three minutes left and I have a two or three goal lead thinking, oh, okay, I can muck around for these next three minutes. More often than not, this leads to my opponent getting the upper hand and actually starting to forge a comeback. If you've watched my 1v1 series, you can probably tell when I switch off from a game and completely run on autopilot. Tip number two is to predict the next play. Rocket League is a physics-based game, so there will be a certain outcome when Ever you hit the ball, challenge it, or execute a mechanic. To further explain this, in Rocket League you don't have any power-ups or special powers to influence an outcome in the game, unless you're playing Rumble of course. Predicting the next play allows you to have influence on what happens next in a game to ensure you're not conceding a goal. You may have heard this in other Rocket League videos, but it's better to be proactive rather than reactive in a game. That can be reading your opponent's position on the field, how the ball is positioned either in front of their car or on top of it, and how close you actually are to your own goal. For example, you may be closer to your opponent's net, seeing them trying to set up the ball on top of their car. Rather than waiting for them to set up the ball and likely flick it, you want to be proactive by challenging them so they aren't able to get full control of the ball. Or, let's say you have possession of the ball. You want to predict what your opponent is trying to achieve so you can counter that. For example, if they are playing super aggressive and driving straight towards you to challenge you, you may want to look to either flick it over them or potentially give off a pass to one of your teammates. This becomes important as you start to hit the higher ranks in the game where your opponents actually know what you're trying to do with the ball and even how they can exploit you when you're on defense. This works hand in hand with my first tip, being present in your thinking and what is likely to happen next. Tip number three is to systemize your thinking. The aim of systemizing how you think is to further avoid going into autopilot and hitting the ball for the sake of hitting it. During a game, I like to break down each play into three elements, the problem, the solution, and the execution. The problem is what can influence the current player of the game. The solution is what I need to do as a player to ensure the problem doesn't have an influence on the play, and the execution is trying to perform the solution. Let's use a game situation for example. The problem may be an opponent trying to demo me from behind when dribbling the ball down the field. The solution could either be jumping to dodge the opponent or tapping my brakes to veer off the path they are taking. Obviously, the execution is trying to perform one of these options. Tip number four is to stay behind the ball. This is useful in both offense and defense, with the aim being not to let the ball get past you and have your opponent score a goal. This may sound a little basic, but you have much more control and influence of what is happening in front of you rather than what is going on behind. The only exception here would be shadow defense. However, this again is actually maintaining control and influence on protecting your goal and not letting your opponent get past. If you're behind the ball, you have much more control of how you can set up your next play and are essentially covering all potential attacking options your opponents may have. This tip is to ensure you are protecting your goal at all costs. Without factoring in a teammate, I like to think that anytime I find myself in front of a ball, 
for example, losing control of it when trying to dribble, it is essentially an open net that my opponent has access to. Similar to if you have possession of the ball but zero boost, it's much better to take a 50-50 to ensure you're covering all options that your opponents have. Tip number five is to be a learner. The aim here is to actively engage with the game to learn from your mistakes you're making in case you're faced with similar situations in future games. We can use the example of learning a new mechanic for the first time. You have to learn certain inputs in a very particular order to execute that mechanic. At first, you fail over and over, but as you slowly break the mechanic down, you develop the correct inputs that allow you to pull it off, usually after hours of training. You want to adopt this practice when you're playing. Learn from the mistakes you keep making and what you need to improve on to prevent it from happening again. I myself went on a seven game losing streak recently and I can safely say it was because I was too impatient when challenging for the ball. I was stuck in a fixed mindset that I couldn't even fathom trying to learn from the clearly obvious flaws that were happening in that competitive session. If you're up for it, spend some time analyzing your own replays. It can be an opportunity to see your thought process at times before conceding a goal. A handy way I like to see this is watching from my opponent's point of view and how they were able to score on me. Watching higher ranked gameplay is also a great way to learn about how and what players do to be in those ranks. I know I personally get a lot of value from tuning into RLCS broadcasts, watching the pros playing against each other. Even better is playing against a friend who is a higher rank than you. Usually it's a bloodbath of goals, but also a great learning opportunity to see what areas of your gameplay you need to improve. So there we have it. These are some tips to help you improve your game sense in Rocket League. No matter how many hours you put into this game, it is something that you will continually improve on during your Rocket League career. So, you're still here, and apparently YouTube thinks you may like this video. Why not check it out? I'm Jack, and I'll see you next video. Catch up.